the tube is non transposing instruments, it plays that pitch with a keyed instrument in. Apart from um, brass band writing, that's always in triple clef. So they dial all transposing instruments, but you only have to write the tube part in bass clef. That's it. As, as, you, as you want it to sound. Well, <clears throat> all tubers are sax horns and they're the colour in shape. So they start very narrow and they just get wider as they go through. They're all similar construction, really. Um, they do this really between these three tubers on size. High B flat, tenor tuber, um, double E flat, bass tuber, and a double B flat, contrabass tuber. This one has rotary valves, so there's two mouthpieces, and you buzz your lips through it. And they tend to play on the F tuber and the C tuber. And in this country, we tend to play on the E flat and B flat, although that is changing a bit. Some players are taking on the continental tubers. The biggest tubers is in, in, in bore sizes that makes them sort of sound. And that's got a very big bore that makes a big sound, very warm, warm and large. Um, but then you could buy a double B flat tuba, it'd be nowhere near the same, that'd be so thin and, and, and small. They don't have bass instruments, they have a harmonic series. Um, first being an, oct an octave, and then a fifth, a fourth, a major third, minor third, uh, then the one tone, and another tone. Then one, that seventh one is, uh, is flat, so it's not you don't use it, it's, a, it's an actual, an actual playing. And they get closer to go up from there. And the valves simply fill in the gaps. The seventh valve is a simply closed tone by a semitone. And the first valve by a tone. The third valve is one and a half tones. It's slightly flat, so you don't use that finger very well. And then we have a fourth valve, which bridges a gap between the, um, <coughs> the second series of harmonics and, 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 and the first one. At the moment, we've got a gap between. Fill those notes in, we have the fourth valve, which is equivalent to the first and third. The euphonium is a beautiful counterpoint of the instrument that you hear in military bands or in brass bands at times. It's a fantastic singing tone. I don't play the tenor tube, but I mean, I'll try and demonstrate that. But, um, it's got the same range as the trombone. And uh, then it seems sounds pretty good in the river just Comical, it can sound funereal, it can, it, it can sound all sorts of ways, but uh, that's like an other instrument. I can't really think of it as particularly tuber esque. I mean, people have, you know, they always think of tabular tuba and, and on par parts and lilies and sort of thing. Yes, it can play in a jocular way like that, but uh, it can sound very, very sorrowful. And, uh, and it's particularly effective in its middle bit. Uh, it is kind of in shape. As, as, as all sex horns are, but it's, it's a different shape, and, and, and the lead pipe is, is, is very small to accommodate a French horns player's uh, mouthpiece because they're played on by the French horns players. It's confusing sometimes in some music because the composer may have bass tuba in, in, in mind, but he's brought contra bass tuba because there are four bass, there, there are two bass, two, uh, two, two bass um, Varga tuba. So to distinguish between the two, he calls this one contrabass, 
because it is a contrabass to the Barker tubers. But that's a fact, it's not a contrabass tuber, it's bass tuber. Let's make things up. I'd go for the bass tuber unless I it, it, it felt that it needed a bigger tuber. Uh, according to, you know, according to the, the scoring and and it doesn't really, not a question of depth because because the, the bass tube can go as low as, as, as a bond bass tube because uh, after a while you run out of uh, bombershire you can't make a bombershire any bigger you run out of space in that piece mm. anyway. it's just keep your breath coming the whole time <laughs> Suck so it is very very short and almost stop the tuba it rings on so much that it gets it comes out the instrument I have to stop them with my tongue very often to get stuckissimo because that's about as short I can play. But if I if uh, I don't do that it brings on so much more. I tend to think of it as as as, as sep just slightly separate. But the very soft tanning. Normal tanning is 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 just with just with the front of your tongue. Da 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 da. Double tanning is we go tucker 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 tucker, so you can play much quicker. Tucker 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 tucker. Triple tongue is titica, 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 titica. I haven't got particularly fast tongue, so I've relied on a double tongue quite a lot. Uh, but I mean, some players can play in a single tongue quite quickly. Um, triple tongue and double tongue are all possible on the tuba. I personally can't keep triple tongue going for a very long time. I tend to throw up myself a bit, but that's me. I'm sure that tuba players can. Right. <laughs> Quite a good length to play a triple tongue for. <laughs> for me, I get I get tired after that. It goes all goes wrong. You know. This is a, a wooden boot, which I've found the most most satisfactory for two years. <laughs> Slightly different, but not a great difference. And like mutes with trombones, you can really tell them between the two. And I hate using tuba mutes. No. They often don't sound very good. There's metal ones. And fibre ones are the most too commonly found. And also stone line ones, which I haven't got one of those. It's produced sparingly in the orchestra, but uh, and there's some ways of doing it. I, 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 I myself can mainly do it with, with, from a diaphragm and, and, and movement of the, 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 the instrument. Some people say that it should be done with the embouchure, which probably is probably the best way to do it, but I find, I find it very really difficult myself to do embouchure a bit by so. Trills at the bottom of the instrument are a bit of a no no. It just sounds like a really fuzzy affair. Right. Ugly. My poor music on those. They're uh, uh, very slow at the best and non existent at the bottom. I mean, you, you can't hear any notes. Anyway, if you just blow through a tuba, it doesn't sound very loud. 
I wouldn't reach the audience at all. Because all the, the, the smaller bore instruments like trumpets and trombones, it does sound much louder. So what I, I do is you know, I just put my put my valves down to a tiny bit. And you can even make that uh, into a certain tone as well. I mean, by, by banging in and putting the valves down. So. Some the shorts, uh, I, I, I can't do them, I can't sharpen them, it's going to flatten them. We can make them a bit sharp, but you hardly notice it. But, uh, so you go up, you tend to, to close up the embouchure and they, the, the sound quality disappears. sing a fifth above it and then a third and some other harmonic sound as well. control is a problem in the low register because you're using so much more air so you write long phrases for the tube at the bottom in the instrument you don't know if you have to do it not before what the composer wants because you simply going to keep breathing and breaking the phrase up all the time but in the middle of the there's no problem the Mexican composers were well tested and sharp they were written fantastic part I love playing to be uh, um, Sibelius, first, second symphonies, fantastic parts. There's so much, so much good stuff written out for the tuba. Yes, tacit movements. <laughs> um, no, it's, I suppose you'd be, it doesn't happen to be missing orchestra, but just the umpa parts we're playing, you know, first and third beat of the bars can be very tedious, I have to admit. And just just bars and bars and bars of eight notes, so everybody hates that. <laughs> Some thematic material, which is which is what I like to play, rather than just just accompanying or filling in. If you don't really know that, you start playing it. Really, the bottom register is not not terribly good for, for thematic material. It just doesn't doesn't sound that great, really, because the, well, because of breath breathing and then the quality of sound that we try to. Uh, to create a good sound on the instruments, but it's a bit difficult to, to make the bottom sound because it's going to the top. But that's a, but that, that's what we get rid of all the time because you, we want a, a contrast bar to the brass section, so that's a, a role in life. But just be pumping those notes out all the time can be weary. Well, if you're going to write melodies for the tube, it's better, better they be slightly fragmented so that spaces to breathe naturally rather than spoil the phrasing. It's just a shame. I have so many phrases you know, in the orchestral music because there's just been no, nowhere to breathe, no natural places to breathe. 
I mean, Valve must sing his own show. There's parts in that where you have to break it up because you can't do the whole phrase. So it's been going on for a long time. <laughs> the only thing about not even using mutes is giving the player time to get it in and out. I've had, had people stand beside, behind me and put mutes in for me on occasions because I haven't got time to do it. And it's got to be done because it, it will affect music, but it doesn't, you know. So that's always a good idea, so you've plenty of time. I mean, I, I didn't have to do, oh, spend much time warming up when I first became a professional musician. But uh, each year goes past, you have to make sure that you are properly warmed up and well in practice as well. It's, it's, it's a very physical business plan that you but it's very wearing on bodies, but as the I'm sure. Uh, from time I could go home at the concert and I'm absolutely exhausted. A bit like navying, really. <laughs> Yes, well, stamina, if you, if you want to play in a high register for long periods of time, it does take a lot of stamina. And, and well, it's, it's hard to record for. Uh, apart from Berlioz, there's quite a lot of high play in there. Um, but from the middle register down to the very low register, stamina is no problem. You can play for quite long periods of time on tuba. It's not quite so crippling on the lippers as a trumpet. There are lots of pieces that have two tubers, Strauss wrote for two tubers in Zarathustra. Um, of course, the tenor and ten bass tuba were often written together, the planets. Valios has written two tubers. Um, yeah, there's, there's plenty of instances of two tubers. I prefer the E flat tuba rather than the F because it's, it, 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 can, it can do almost both jobs. It, it, it can make, make that sound like a double C or a double B sometimes, if you approach it in the right way. But if any, any composer wants, wants a tuba, you must ask for it, otherwise it's up to the tuba to, to, to decide. Sometimes that's better. <laughs> but, anyway, but, but if he really wants a particular sound, and he should put on the, on, on, on the, on, on, in the score, double B flat tuba or C tuba, double C tuba. And then the, 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 the,